Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a very exciting video because I am going to be ranking all of the Russian books that I read in 2021. About six months ago I posted this video on my channel talking about a new series of videos that I wanted to do and a new reading goal that I wanted to enforce in 2021 to read more Russian literature because in 2020 I really discovered my love for especially Leo Tolstoy's writing as well as wanting to learn more about Russian history and Russian literature as a whole. So 2021 was full of amazing Russian books. I have 16 to rank today and I'm very excited because all of them were at least, I think number 16 was still a three or a four star read. Um, so I really loved them all. It's so hard to to rank them, my tops were quite quite easy to uh, to place, but I'm very excited to tell you all of the Russian classics I read and to rank them from least favorite of the favorites because I really love them all to my very favorite. And if you watched my most recent video with my favorite books of 2021, then you might already know which ones are going to be coming uh, in first or second or third place. So. Without further ado, I'm going to start with my number 16 book and the lowest ranked, although I still really enjoyed it. Number 16 is Woe from Wit by Alexander Grabodov. This is also translated by Betsy Hulick. This is a verse comedy in four acts, and I have a really hard time describing this play. I've tried to describe it before and I just do a very bad job. So I'm going to read the little blurb on the back because it says it beautifully. Wolf from Wit is one of the masterpieces of Russian drama, a verse comedy set in Moscow high society after the Napoleonic Wars. It offers sharply drawn characters and clever repartee, mixing meticulously crafted banter and biting social critique. And this is really about the characters that are presented in this play. Um, are kind of, yes, criticizing one another, and it's all about how social social commentary affects the way that you view people and the, the characters in this book, or in this play, as well as we have quite a few characters from different uh, stations or statuses in society. And the reason why I wanted to read this play was because it was the play that inspired Pushkin to write his story in verse, Yevgeny Onegin, and that, not to spoil it or anything, is one of my favorite books of all time. I loved the commentary, I loved the banter, I found it quite funny, but for some reason I just didn't connect to it that well. I don't know if it's because I would have enjoyed it more as a visual experience because it was written to be a play so performed and I always think about, because I love plays very much, I love Oscar Wilde's plays, Shakespeare is one of my biggest, my favorite playwright, and so it's hard to approach a play knowing that it was meant for a visual media. You're sort of taking away part of the beauty of the the written form of a play, if that makes any sense. So I would love to to try and find. I don't know if there is like a stage performance I can watch or something and maybe get a bit more enjoyment out of it, but I really, really did like it. I just didn't connect to it that much. So that's why it's number 16 on the list. Number 15 is Spring Turns by Ivan Turgenev. Again, I really loved this story. I gave it four stars. Again, I just don't think I was that attached to the narrative as a whole or to the characters. Um, this Again, I, I'm going to just butcher the plot. Um, it is set partially in Russia, partially in Germany, and then at the end, um, the funny thing about this story is that the ma one of the main characters, her name is Gemma, and she is Italian, and I am Italian, and her mother's name is Leonora, and my mother's name is Leonora. And then she ends up, at the end of the book, I don't want to spoil it, but she ends up in a place that is very relevant to my life. Um, so it was just really bizarre to watch this character that had so many ironic coincidences that were similar to me. Um, but anyway, so on the back it says, Returning to Russia from a tour in Italy, 23-year-old Dmitry Sanin breaks his journey at Frankfurt and the, for the first time falls deeply, deliriously in love. Convinced that nothing can come in the way of everlasting happiness between him and his fiancée, he impetuously decides to sell his Russian estate and start a new life not knowing that his youthful vulnerability makes him potential prey for darker, destructive passion." Just something about this book when I was reading it, I wasn't 
eager to pick it up. Like, when I was reading it, I was enjoying it, but it wasn't one of those books that I thought, oh, I want to stop whatever I'm doing and pick up the book and read it. So that's why it's lower ranked, although I did really enjoy it as a whole, and now retrospectively thinking back, I really do like the narrative and the storyline, and Ivan Turgenev, I read two of his stories this year, and they were my first Turgenevs, and I really, really love his writing. It's so beautiful, so poetic. Everything he writes is gorgeous, and I really love his writing, and I can't wait to keep reading more of his stories and his books, but yeah, this one just, compared to the other ones, didn't have as much of an effect on me. So that's why that one's number 15. And coming in at number 14 is The Double by Fyodor Dostoevsky. I read and fell in love with a bunch of Dostoevsky stories this year, so it was quite hard to rank them because I enjoyed them all for very different reasons. Now, The Double, I probably enjoyed the least out of all of them, just because, again, I, I felt a little disconnected. Um, and it's not really a story that you can deeply connect to because it's about this man who is quite an unreliable narrator. His mental health is quite questionable, so we don't know if we can truly trust what's going on in the story. So basically, the double is about our main character and how our main character sees or says that there is this other man that looks exactly like him, that has his same name, that is his double. And it's not really specified whether that person is actually there or not, and how this kind of has a really crippling effect on our main character. So the back, it says, The Double from 1846 is the nightmarish story of Mr. Goliadkin, a man who is haunted or possessed by his own double. Is Mr. Goliadkin Jr. really a double or simply a fearful side of his own nature? This uncertainty is what gives urgency and horror to a tale which may be read as a classic study of a human breakdown. Typical Dostoevsky. But I love it. I love Dostoevsky so much, and it was a really interesting read, just not one that I felt deeply, deeply connected to, so that's why it's number 14. Number 13 goes to A Hero of Our Time by Mikhail Lermontov. I really, really enjoyed this story. It's quite episodical, and it doesn't really have one fluid flowing plot, but it, it, it is connected, and we are following our main quite unlikable character. I believe it's Pekorin? It's P-E-C-H-O-R-I-N. Pecorin or Pechorin, but I think it's Pecorin, but I'm not 100% sure. Please help me out in the comments. Is it Pecorin or Pechorin? I don't know. There's a quote on the back that says, You will say that no man can be so bad. Pecorin is quite an unlikable character, but you do... Like, I was still interested in where his life was leading and, and where the story would go. This was the first Russian book that I read after posting that video about me wanting to read more Russian literature, so it will always have a very exciting, special place in my heart, knowing that it's one of the first stories that, uh, that I read, and specifically because it was quite an early Russian classic that paved the road for a lot of others. On the back it says, It is a marvelous novel and an early landmark in Russian literature, inspiring Tolstoy, Dostoevsky, and Chekhov, among others, in the great stream of 19th century masters that followed. In five linked episodes, Lermontov builds up the portrait of a man caught in and expressing the sickness of his times. I really enjoyed it as a book itself, but again, I don't think I enjoyed it as much as the others, so that's why it is number... 13. Number 12 goes to Resurrection by Leo Tolstoy. I recently read this for the Dickens vs. Tolstoy book club that I am a co-host of with my friend Emma, and she hated this book. <laughs> she hated this book, but I really enjoyed it because this is Tolstoy's last novel, and because of the Dickens vs. Tolstoy debate, we started with his earliest novel, Childhood, Boyhood, Youth, which I loved, and we ended the year with Resurrection, his latest novel, and I really liked seeing how he grew and how the things that he wrote about greatly changed over time, and the things that were important to him in his writing were very different. And what I loved about this story was that it takes us into the criminal courts, and it shows us the brutality of the Russian law system in a way that I never really saw before in Russian literature. And it took us to Siberia, which is a place that I was never taken in a story before I knew that Siberian exile was such 
um, such a heartbreaking part of so many people's lives and it was a groundbreaking and life-changing part of people's lives, especially Dostoevsky. Before Siberia, he was a very different writer than after Siberia. So I knew that it, it was this incredible thing to experience, but I never really experienced it as a reader myself. And so Tolstoy taking us to Siberia and giving that insight was mind-blowing and this book did so much for Russian literature and so much for Russian history. It was a revolutionary novel. It paved the road for so many genres and for so many other writers and stories. And so as a work, it is incredible. And I love Tolstoy so much. He's my favorite writer and my favorite writer, especially of 2021, because I really got to experience so much of his writing this year. And I can't wait to experience more of his writing. Out of all of his novels, this wasn't my favorite. And I think that these other ones uh, rank a bit higher because of because they have a deeper connection with me. Number 11 goes to Poor Folk by Fyodor Dostoevsky. This is a collection of letters between this young girl and this older man and how it's really all about their relationship and how their position, their very low position in society affects them and their relationships with one another. And this is an epistolary novel. It's one of Fyodor Dostoevsky's first books or first works of writing and I loved it. I absolutely loved it. And the way that he portrays the lower class, uh, because I love Tolstoy so much, he often writes about the aristocracy. So to see other writers, especially Dostoevsky, writing about the lower class, it's, it's so great to open your eyes to all the different types of people in Russian society. And this on the back, there's a quote and it says, It's not surprising one feels ashamed when one's bare elbows are peeping through one's sleeves. It's just, it's so brutal and raw and honest and everything that I love about Dostoevsky and I just really, really, really loved it. But again, these other books and these other Dostoevskys that I will eventually talk about rank just a little bit higher than this one, but I still really, really loved this book. I highly recommend you read it, especially if you want to start with Dostoevsky. I think this is a great place to start with him. Number 10 goes to a book I don't actually have a physical copy of, and that is The Overcoat by Gogol. I loved The Overcoat. I thought it was so funny. It's very satirical and humorous and everything that Gogol is, is known for. And it was my first Gogol and I, I really, really loved it and I can't wait to read more from him. I, it's such a short story so I don't really want to give too much away, but it's about a clerk who is a civil servant and, and he doesn't have that much money but he isn't completely poor and it's about him finding a greater purpose in saving up money to buy an Overcoat coat and then what eventually happens and how this overcoat sort of becomes a bigger symbol for him and it's it's really really funny. I, I highly recommend you read it. It's very short and I really loved it. I really want to also get a copy of it but again there are these other stories that rank just a bit higher but I really enjoyed it. Number nine it goes to Notes from Underground by Fyodor Dostoevsky. So this edition has Notes from Underground and the double and of course like I said already I read the double and um, I read both of them so that's wonderful. I loved Notes from Underground. I filmed a whole reading vlog about it so if you don't know, um, if you're new to my channel, I have a playlist of videos called Carolina Maria Reads or Carolyn Maria Reads. And that is the Russian version of my name, Carolyn Marie Reads. So if you want to hear me talk a bit more about these books, then I will link all the videos mentioned down below that have to do with my Russian, my Russian reading. So Notes from Underground was an incredible reading experience because it was just... Everything that I imagined Dostoevsky would be is what he is in Notes from Underground. Like, I feel like in Notes from Underground, like, Poor Folk is a fantastic place to start with Dostoevsky. Because it's just... <laughs> just the first line. I can't think of this book without thinking about the first line. It's about this underground man who is basically disgusted by so much of the world and it's him d digging the reader into his hole and it's... <laughs> okay, the first line says, I am a sick man. I am an angry man. I am an unattractive man. I think there is something wrong with my liver. But I don't understand the least thing about my illness. And I don't know for certain what part of me is affected. 
I am not having any treatment for it, and I never have had, although I have a great respect for medicine and for doctors. I am besides extremely superstitious, if only in having such respect for medicine. I am well educated enough not to be superstitious, but superstitious I am. No, I refuse treatment out of spite. And he's this horrible main character. And I titled my video reading this book, reading this story, Notes from Underground, Dostoevsky Melted My Brain in a Good Way, because that's exactly what this book does. Um, what do they even say about it on the back? It is a study of a single character, the real man of the Russian majority, and a revelation of Dostoevsky's own deepest beliefs. One of his best critics has said of the first part that it forms his most utterly naked pages. Never afterwards was he so fully and openly to reveal the innermost recesses unmeant for display of his heart. And that is completely true. Uh, I definitely feel that while reading this book, and it's just... I just I want to give Dostoevsky a hug after reading this book, <laughs> but yes, I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. Number eight goes to Ward 6 by Anton Chekhov. So this is a short story collection by Anton Chekhov. This one is translated by Richard Pavir and Larissa Velikonsky, and I just read Ward 6. So that's where <laughs> only one little section of tabs I have, but I... I loved Ward 6. I keep thinking about it to this day, and it's it's about, again, Russian society and how it manipulates people's positions and, um, and how it sort of infiltrates everyone's lives in detrimental ways, especially this one main character that we have in Ward 6. It's such a short story, so I don't really want to say too much about it, but we are set in a psychiatric ward, and it's about the the patients that are that live in this ward and why they're there and how when one person wants to sort of help them the repercussions of that and how people view people that are mentally ill i mean it's it's a fantastic study on mental illness and and what it how it's perceived especially in history um i i loved it it was mind blowing um, and I can't wait to read more of Anton Chekhov in the future. I would love to know if you have any recommendations on what other Anton Chekhov's stories or plays I should start with, because I have gotten a few recommendations, but I, I would love to hear more. So, yes, I absolutely loved Word 6. That one could even go up on the list, too. It's so hard to rank them, honestly. At number 7, we have Ivan Turgenev's First Love. I first loved this this story. <laughs> That's a horrible pun. It begins with this group of men talking about their experiences falling in love for the first time, and this one main character, our main character, says, oh well I have a story that will beat all of your stories, and then they ask him to tell it, and this is him telling his story of falling in love with this young girl for the first time. So he uh, takes us back in time and tells us the story, and it's it's really just delving into how infatuation affects people and and the things that infatuation makes us do, and also not only in his eyes is he infatuated, but the woman or the young girl that he is infatuated with has her own infatuations, and how it's very crippling and. Um, and it's quite dark, and this story takes on a really interesting turn, and it twists a lot of different things in an unexpected way, and I loved it. Uh, again, Turgenev's writing is incredible. The way that he expresses human emotion is is just breathtaking, and I I loved it. I absolutely loved it. The ending was incredibly shocking. Um, but I, I did sort of see it coming. One thing that I can say about Russian Lit is the more you read Russian Lit, in my opinion, the more you're able to predict how other Russian books are going to go because they have quite similar themes, quite similar endings. Usually Russian books end tragically. And I usually love tragic endings because I feel like they last in my memory the longest, but loved First Love. Highly recommend. I think that's a great place to start with Turgenev, um, as well as Spring Turrence. I think Spring Turrence is a fantastic place to start as well. At number six, we have Childhood, Boyhood, Youth by Leo Tolstoy. 
I loved this book. This book will always have a really special place in my heart because it was the first Dickens vs. Tolstoy book that we read in January of 2021. Um, this book was with me for a really difficult time as well. Last January was quite hard for me and my family, so it really felt like Tolstoy was there with me through it all, so this book will always hold a really special place in my heart. This is about a main character, Nikolenka, and his childhood, boyhood, and youth. And we follow, it's really a coming-of-age story following him from his adolescence to um, maturity and to his university days and how he sort of... Childhood was my favorite part of, of this collection, and the more you read, the more, unfortunately, I found him to be a little less likable as he got older, just the decisions he made and his opinions of other people. I loved experiencing young Tolstoy and seeing how the seeds of what he does so well in War and Peace and Anna Karenina were planted in this book, and how they just bloom and bloom beautifully in his later works. And I love this story. I think it's fantastic. Um, would I recommend starting with this book with Tolstoy? Probably not, honestly. Um, but I do think it's definitely worth the read. I would say start with Anna Karenina because it's my favorite book ever. But, um, and I, and I find it quite approachable. But if you love Tolstoy, definitely read Childhood Boyhood Youth. Um, even if you're new to Tolstoy, I do think it would be a good place to start. What am I saying? I don't know. Love this book. <laughs> okay, at number five, we are getting to the books that I absolutely adore. That is White Nights by Fyodor Dostoevsky. I adored this book so much. Oh my gosh. It's a love story. It's also partially about unrequited love, um, and it's it's fantastic. It's so short, so what do I want to say about it, about its plot? Um, on the back it says, Two devastating Russian stories of solitude, unrequited love, and depravity from beyond the grave. Um, oh my gosh. This is also in the Penguin Little Black Classics collection. It's number 118. I highly recommend you read it. I also think this is a wonderful place to start with Dostoevsky. This book just broke my heart, but also put my heart back together. It gave me hope, but it also took away my hope. And it was just a really beautiful, it was beautiful Dostoevsky. He can be so brutal, and this is brutal in its own way, but it, there was a lot of light in it and beauty, and even though there is quite a lot of darkness um, as well. I just, I thought it was brilliant. I love it. I just want to reread it, honestly. Um, I want to reread all of these books. I think they're all fantastic, which is why I'm making a video about them, naturally. Oh, there, okay, there is this one section that I just want to read out because it's stunning. It is from page 15, and I wrote right here, I have no words, and I highlighted it, and I put a yellow tab, which means it's one of my favorite quotes. I am a dreamer. I have so little real life. Oh, yes, this is one of my favorites. Okay. I have so little real life that I regard such moments as this one now to be so rare that I can't help repeating these moments in my dreams. I will dream of you all night, for an entire week, all year long. I will come here tomorrow without fail, exactly here, to this very spot, exactly at this time, and I'll be happy as I recall what happened yesterday. This place is already dear to me. I already have two or three such places in Petersburg. Once I even shed tears because of her memory, like you. Who knows, perhaps ten minutes ago you, too, were crying because of a memory. But forgive me, I've forgotten myself again. Perhaps at one time you were particularly happy here. Just, oh. Dostoevsky, I love you. Oh, I love you. <laughs> Coming in at number four, if you watched my favorite books of the year video, this was in it, and that is The Heart of the Dog by Mikhail Bulgakov. Oh my gosh, this book blew me out of the water. It blew me away, it blew my mind, it was just incredible. Um, I knew that he was going to be a really bizarre writer, I knew he wrote about things that were quite um, unexpected and just made you feel like you were in a fever dream and what the heck is happening but also I'm loving what's happening and that's exactly what this book was. This book is about 
two doctors, one is a professor, they take the pituitary gland and the testicles of a recently deceased man and they put them in the body of a dog and it's about how this dog slowly becomes less dog and more man and how this man dog sort of ruins their entire lives. On the back it says, a distinctly worryingly human animal is now on the loose and the professor's hitherto respectable life becomes a nightmare. An absurd and superbly comic story, this classic novel can also be read as a fierce pra parable of the Russian Revolution. And that's completely true. And I loved it. I loved it. I was not expecting to love this book as much as I do, but I read it in one sitting. I could literally not put it down, and I thought it was fantastic, and I can't wait to read more Bulgakov. I really want to read The Master and Margarita in 2022, because everybody says that it's his best, and it's just the one that I think everyone loves, so very excited to read more Bulgakov. And if you want a good place to start with him, Heart of the Dog is fantastic, and I highly, highly, highly recommend you read it if you haven't. We are now on to my top three. Again, if you've watched my favorite books of 2021 video, these will come as no surprise. And number three goes to Leo Tolstoy's War and Peace. War and Peace was read this year because of the Dickens vs. Tolstoy debate, and I started this book right before I graduated university, and then I finished it after graduating university. So it was with me for a really big part of my life, a really big turning point where I went from a student to an adult to a working professional, and that was quite quite the experience to feel like I had a life in this book, but this book also had a life with me. And because it was such a long journey of reading it, and there are so many characters, and it spans such a big length of time, it really felt like I lived this story. And it felt like it lived, like I just said, with me. So it's, it's a life-changing book. If you have been hesitant about reading War and Peace at all, do not be. It's just a lot of pages. If you set yourself a reading goal of reading a certain amount of pages or a certain amount of chapter every single day, you will get it done eventually. Um, I think what's so daunting about it is the fact that it is so big and the fact that it is a Russian classic and the fact that there are a lot of characters, but really all you have to know is the main characters and they appear very fre frequently so their names will just be inherent in your brain. Something that I did that really helped as well was watching the BBC miniseries before or while you read the book. It's a wonderful way to visualize what you're reading because I know with certain Russian literature it's quite hard to visualize the surroundings if you're not too familiar with it. And so I think that reading and watching adaptations of what you're reading is very helpful. Andre, Pierre, Natasha, Nikolai, Sonia, Petya, all of them. Oh my gosh, they just, this book holds my heart. Maria, can't forget Maria. All, just, all of the characters feel like family to me. And it is about family, it is about friendship, and it feels like you are a part of that. It feels like Tolstoy holds out his hand, takes you into the story, and says, you are also a character. Come and live with these other characters. And it was a life-changing experience. It was beautiful. And I do have a bunch of vlogs, so if you want to hear me blab on and on and on about War and Peace, I direct you to those reading vlogs. Loved it. One of my favorite books ever. Probably one of the most uh, affecting books I've ever read. Now at the number two spot, you guys, number two and number one are interchangeable, but I'm putting this at number two for 2021 because it was a reread and not a first read. So really, this is my number one book ever, but I'm putting it for number two for 2021 because it was a, it was reread in 2021. Does that make sense? It kind of makes sense to me, but also not really. Anyway, it is Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy. This is my favorite book on the face of the earth. If you have been here for any length of time, you know that all I do is talk about this book, all I do is blab about it. So this is me telling you to read it if you have not. If you want a big reading goal for 2022, let this be that big reading goal. 
conquer Anna Karenina. You can do it. It is so approachable. I read it for the first time in 2020, and what blew me away and what really shocked me was how approachable it was and how easy to read it was. And I love it. Levin, Konstantin Dmitrievich Levin, read it for Levin. Read it for Levin. <laughs> That's all you have to know. Um, for my reread, my opinions really changed quite a lot about some of the characters. Not about the book. It remains to be my favorite book ever. But I had a, a very different feelings about a lot of the characters, which I wasn't expecting. And it was beautiful. I also have a reading vlog of me rereading Anna Karenina, so if you again want to hear me blab on and on about it, I direct you to that reading vlog. But it was just, it was just everything. This book is everything to me. This book is part of my personality. It's part of who I am. It's part of how I identify myself as a reader. Um, and it's what made me love Tolstoy. And without this book, I wouldn't be the reader that I am right now. I actually probably wouldn't have read any of these other books without reading Anna Karenina first, because this is what really made me want to read a bunch of Russian literature, because I love it so much. Um, yes. What else can I say about it? Nothing. Just read it, please. And tell me that you read it, and tell me what you think. I know so many of you guys message me and tag me in your stories saying that you're reading it and you have me in mind, and that just makes my heart so happy. It makes me overjoyed. So, if you do read it and you do conquer it in 2022, please tell me so that I can cheer you on and, and be there with you because I love it so much, and I just want to experience Anna Karenina with you guys. Also, again, if you're daunted, I love the movie adaptation. There are a million movie adaptations of a lot of these books, but especially Anna Karenina and War and Peace. I highly recommend the Kira Knightley version. I know quite a lot of other people who like Anna Karenina don't recommend the Kira Knightley version, but I recommend it. So... Take that with a grain of salt. I know some people don't love how it's kind of a theatrical take on the story. Um, because there's this whole theme of society as theater in Anna Karenina, and the director Joe Wright really took that and played with that really well. I think it's done beautifully. I think the movie adaptation of Anna Karenina with Keira Knightley, directed by Joe Wright, is a moving work of art. Like, it is just a beautiful piece of art. Um, and Domhnall Gleeson plays Levin. Are you kidding me? I can't picture Levin any other way than Domhnall Gleeson. Or maybe like a young Tolstoy. That's my two visions of Levin, is young Tolstoy and Domhnall Gleeson. But please, 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 please read Anna Karenina. Please. Thank you. Coming in at number one, if you guys have watched my favorite books of 2021. You will know my favorite book of 2021 was Yevgeny Onegin by Alexander Pushkin. I loved this book so much. Oh my gosh, this is a story in verse. This is about our very disgruntled Yevgeny. He's very comfortable in the city, but then he goes to the country and because he inherits this, this estate and the people that surround this estate greatly affect his life. It's about love and friendship and the results of love and friendship. Um, I don't want to say too much because I feel like this book is so beautiful to experience for the first time without knowing a lot. Um, this is in verse and when I was going into this book I thought I'm not smart enough to read this. Storytelling in verse is really hard for me to grasp and here we are! It's my favorite, one of my favorite books ever. Um, it is my favorite book of 2021, and I love it with my whole heart. What I think is so fascinating is that Alexander Pushkin takes these really strict and confining literary forms of rhyme and meter and rhythm and a particular amount of lines in a stanza, and he makes it feel like he did it with his eyes closed in his sleep without even a care in the world. It's so seamless. And the way that he tells a story through all these very restrictive forms, it's just incredible. And I think that why I love this book so much is because it's the most beautiful writing I've ever experienced. It's just, it's so gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. And I filmed a whole reading vlog where I read this book. So again, if you want to hear me blab more about it, uh, you can watch that reading vlog. Maybe I will read you 
the dedication and maybe like the first stanza so you can get an idea of how it begins but there is also a fantastic audiobook narrated by Stephen Fry on YouTube that you can listen to for free if you aren't super comfortable with physically reading it yourself and you want to try listening to the audiobook I highly recommend the audiobook it literally feels like spoken song like it feels like music in words and also, the movie adaptation titled Onegin with um, Ray Fiennes and Liv Tyler. It's amazing. I love the movie adaptation. I watched it for the first time after finishing the book, and then the next night I watched it again <laughs> because I just had to watch it two nights in a row, apparently. Okay, so here is the dedication to Pushkin's Yevgeny Onegin. Tired of amusing proud society, grown fonder of my friend's regard, I would have wanted with due piety to offer you a pledge, dear bard, more worthy of your soul's perfection, full of a holy reverie, of poetry and clear reflection, of high thoughts and simplicity. But so be it, let your affection accept these chapters and their rhymes, half comic and half melancholic, ideal and down-to-earth bucolic. The careless fruit of leisure times, of sleepless nights, light inspirations, of immature and withered years, the intellect's cold observation, the heart's impressions marked in tears. I love the heart's impressions marked in tears. Oh, okay. Then we will go to chapter one. Stanza one says, My uncle is a man of honor, when in good earnest he fell ill. He won respect by his demeanor, and found the role he best could fill. Let others profit by his lesson, but oh my God, what desolation! To tend a sick man day and night, and not to venture from his sight. What shameful cunning to be cheerful, with someone who is halfway dead. To prop up pillows by his head, to bring him medicine looking tearful. To sigh while inwardly you think, when will the devil let him sink? Now, what I find so wonderful is that we, we get this storytelling through these confines and how it's so easy to understand what he's saying even though it's written in a way that you think might be challenging. So I'm going to share another stanza. This is stanza 27 from chapter 1, and I wrote in the margins, It feels like a painting come to life. And I was just baffled by this imagery. But to continue with our story, we'd better hurry to the ball, to which Onegin, in his glory, has sped by coach to make his call. Through sleeping streets, past houses darkened, twin carriage lamps pour out a jocund illumination row on row, projecting rainbows on the snow. With lampations around it scattered, a splendid house is brightly lit, past whole glass windows shadows flint, and profiled heads are silhouetted of ladies and outlandish men, fashion's most recent specimen. Ah, oh, I love it! So we are taking, in just such a short stanza, we are taken from one destination to another with this beautiful imagery in such a short amount of words. And I remember there was this one stanza, I don't honestly remember exactly where it is. There's this one part where he basically explains the before, during, and after of the Napoleonic Wars in one stanza. Leo Tolstoy did the exact same thing, but did it in 1,000 plus words. <laughs> so I find it fascinating how, and I, I love that he did it in 1,000 plus words, but I find it fascinating how we can take these similar things and, do, and explain them in such very different mediums and very different forms. And I just think this book is an incredible work of genius and I think it's beautiful and it's breathtaking and it's everything that I love. <laughs> so please, please, please read it. I feel like it's one of those books that might daunt a lot of people because it's written in verse, um, but it's it's really quite easy to get into. So I highly, rec highly, highly, highly recommend, obviously. So this is my number one Russian book of the year. Oh my gosh, we made it. I ranked all of them. Um, I hope you enjoyed seeing all of the books that, all the Russian books that I read this year and my ranking of them. 
I've loved having you guys be part of my Russian lit journey and thank you so much for all of your positivity whenever I read Russian books. I know so many of you that are watching my Russian lit videos are native Russians and you always say such sweet things so thank you so much because that really means the world to me and I can't wait to read more Russian books in 2022 and then eventually rank those at the end of the year. And let me know if you have any Russian books that you think I should prioritize in 2022. That would be amazing if you could recommend me more Russian books to read. So thank you so much for watching this video and for being a part of my life. I will see you soon in another video. Happy reading!